Silly me, I forgot about anemones, everyone. Well, not really, actually. I just couldn't cover them properly until today, as I had no good way of filming the murderous starfish, but now I do. And that's because I got help from the Observer Camera Mod, folks. So a link to that will be down below. But back to anemones here. They are essentially just naturally spawning teeth traps, and may appear a bit lackluster because of that. But trust me folks, you will have a newfound appreciation for them after today, I promise you. However, of course, nothing can even be appreciated about them before we actually find the suckers, so we best know how to right, right. And as you could have guessed, anemones are found solely on the lunar islands, but things get a little more specific still, as they really spawn on the rocky beach section or even the lunar archipelago portions of the islands. And hopefully numbers are high, as some farming methods will require a great deal, while others not so much, but we'll be getting to that. For now, let's just talk about that naturally spawning teeth trap thing as, well, that is indeed what they are, all the way up to their damages even, at 60 apiece. Thing is though, teeth traps trigger when hostile creatures are nearby, while anemones activate whenever anything walks near it or over it. Oh, and I do say near, because anemones have a cheeky little range to them, and even an area of effect damage modifier. So keep that in mind, it's gonna be important. But here's some important information for the now. Anemones can be dug up with a shovel, everyone. After being triggered, an anemone stays locked in an upright position, and we can then dig them up to obtain anemone traps. But you're gonna wanna be quick about it, because these guys are quick buggers themselves. So if you're wearing anything that's slowing you down, you probably wanna take it off before handling these things, or they're gonna snip you every single time. But yes, I think you're starting to see where this is going. However, before we do get to the fun stuff, we do need to understand more about how anemones work. This is a guide, mind you. But the thing about anemones is that they reset themselves, folks. And they do so after about a minute following being triggered, and we don't, and heck, can't really do a thing about it. This is good, but it does get better. For you see, anemones reset, and yes, even trigger and damage things while we are entirely off screen. So oh boy, now we're getting somewhere. Keep this in mind from here on out. But yes, before we make use of that newfound knowledge, here is a word of warning. While we can choose to transplant anemones and plant them anywhere and thus create fields of them like we do with teeth traps or bramble traps, as you can see here, they are not teeth or bramble traps, folks. Listen, anything triggers them, so using them against anything is going to be absolutely painful because if you try to run through them to get what's ever chasing you to run through them, you're just going to end up dead though because you're the one that triggered the traps and they're going to hit you but not them. So, yup, this is not how you use anemones, everyone. Instead, why not have some fun and set up a little automatic bunnyman farm of sorts? Making sure to have placed at least four anemones first before building the walls, we can bait bunnymen into the traps with carrots daily, and they will essentially just kill themselves over and over and over again for eternity. Now this is not as enticing as it maybe once was, given the Bunnyman loot changes. But still, here's just one example of what anemones can do for you. So then, we have the big bunnies, why not the small ones? It's a great question, and I agree. So then, place a couple of anemones around your rabbit holes, and there's a high chance the bunny will spawn right on top of one and get toot to death immediately by sea life. But I bet the bunny didn't see that one coming. How about pigment beard? Oh, sure, and it's actually way easier than you might think, too. In fact, set up your pig farm as you normally would in most cases, but simply surround your bait pen with anemones. Then, knowing that pigmen stay out during dusk and night when thinking with their stomachs, just sit back and wait for them to drop dead one by one. Heck, and a single anemone might even hit two at once if you're lucky. 
So, does that mean we can actually automatically wear pig farm then? Nah, not with an enemies at least. Wear pigs have more health and don't last long during full moon nights, obviously. But hey, I think I just thought about the ultimate automatic pig farm though. Okay, how about spiders then? Can we farm them with an enemies? Sure, I suppose. I would warn you, though, that you will likely return to only spider glands and silk, as the other spiders are definitely going to eat whatever monster meat drops before the anemones can reset and thus kill them. But hey, it is possible and requires very little setup, mind you. Just plop down anemones all around spider nests and just come back later, I guess. But now I know what you're thinking. Why not then just wall off some bait like we did with the pigs and then come back later? Well, that's because spiders are one of the few mods that pass through walls when we're off screen at times, for whatever reason. So we got a kind of X and A L plan A there. But moving on then, how about frogs beard? Sure, and honestly folks, there are plenty of farming opportunities with these things if you sit down and think about them. So I'm not here to show and tell them all, because we'll be here all day. So I'm just asking you to use your imagination now, now that I've given you these examples and the information, and just give things a try. Good luck, and have fun. Cause here comes the interesting bit about these things. Planning for boss spawns. I surrounded a moose goose spawning area with these bitey starfish, and was eventually able to kill three mosslings and deal nearly 1,000 damage to moose goose herself while entirely off screen. So is it efficient? Not really. Is it worth it? Likely not. But is it neat regardless? Yes. So. Let's have some fun with this idea now. Like with the Ancient Guardian himself. Here's the thing though. His spawn only matters after killing the Fuel Weaver. So placing enemies all around the center of his arena will hopefully lead to good things there. But for an initial kill, his return to spot is what matters. AKA the spot where he hops back to once he is done with you. So. Manage to run him away from that spot, and then place an anemone on it, or at least as close enough to it as you can, and boom. You can now leave the labyrinth entirely for like 20 days and return to a dead guardian without having damaged him yourself. Not even once. Yup, it's a thing. But things do go a bit further beyond, mind you. For you see, well over a year ago, a user by the name Pruine gave Anemone some thought. And while most of it was information and potential methods already being done by the community and known about, they and another user, Bird Up, put their minds together to answer this. What if we could automatically set up the Ruin Clockworks to die upon each reset of the Ruins themselves? And you know what? They bloody did it too. And here's how it works. Placing an enemy directly on a clockwork spawning spot, too close to it or too far away, will not work. Your enemy placement must be between two to two and a half spaces to either side of the clockworks to spawn at the center. And you can see me going back and forth with an enemy placement right now. And two away from the center is where I'll be placing my anemones. And if done correctly, and the Fuel Weaver has died about two days ago, the clockworks will thus respawn, and the anemones will just get to work. And properly placed anemones will not be uprooted, while improperly placed ones will be like the one that's up by my bishop there. Now, this is really cool. But here's the harsh reality of it all. It's just not worth it. And it is easily negated the moment a clockwork targets you. But why is that? Because clockworks don't return to their exact spawn point when they de-aggro. Therefore, an enemy placement could just be ruined entirely. So in short, the Ancient Guardian thing is pretty darn neat. Many of the prior farms we've shown here today are neat. Many of the ones you probably thought of are also neat. But this Ruins Clockwork one is absolutely pointless and a waste of time. But don't get me wrong, it's a great find. So well done to all those who figured it out. But one last thing before we go, everyone. Remember that automatic vote goat farm I teased the other day? Yup, you guessed it. Anemones have and do play a key role in it. More to come on that later, as it's a bit more complicated than just plopping down some starfish and walking away. But stay tuned. And there you have everyone, a much longer than I thought pseudo guide thing plus a fun showcase on anemones within Don't Starve Together. 
They may seem uninviting, uncool even, and definitely uninteresting, but oh boy, use your brain noggin even a bit, and you can be off to the races while they kill your foes for ya. Literally. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Watch your step, and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.